everyone. Welcome to this CUBE special presentation of CUBE on Cloud Startups with AWS Showcase. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. This session is the Accelerate Digital Transformation and Simplify AWS with Autonomous Cloud Operations with Venkat Krishnamuchari, who's the CEO and co-founder here with me in, in, on remote. Venkat, good to see you. Great to see you, John. So this is a session on uh, essentially day two operations, something that we've been covering on theCUBE, as you know, for a long time. But the big trend is as DevOps becomes much more mainstream, intelligent applications or agile applications have to connect with intelligent infrastructure. And your company, Monty Cloud, has the solution that literally turns IT pros into cloud powerhouses, as you guys say, it's your tagline. This is a super important area. I want to get your thoughts and showcase what you guys are doing as one of the hot 10 startups. Thanks for coming on. So take a minute to explain real quick, what is Monty Cloud all about? Great, thank you again for the opportunity. Uh, hey everybody, uh, I'm Venkat Krishnamachari. I represent my entire team at Monty Cloud. We are an intelligent cloud management platform company. What we help customers do is we help them simplify their cloud operations so they can go innovate and develop intelligent applications. Our platform is called Day2 because everything after the day one of going to cloud needs a lot of expertise. And we decided that's a fun area to go solve for our customers. We solve everything on starting day two from simplifying provisioning to management, to operations, to autonomous cloud operations. Our platform does this for our customers so they can innovate faster and they can close the cloud skills gap that is required to empower the developers. Ben, I want to get your thoughts on day two operations. It's been a trend that's been people talk about for a long time. As people move to the cloud and see the economic advantages, certainly with COVID-19, the market has said, hey, and if you're on cloud native, you win. Andy Jassy at reInvent, his last keynote, really laid out how companies can be proficient in becoming cloud scale um, advantages. One of them was have expertise in cloud. So everyone is kind of doing that. You're starting to see enterprises all build the muscle for cloud operations. That's day one, they get started. Then the kind of the, the challenges and the opportunities kick in when you have to continue it in production. You have things that go on in, in, in the software. The underlying scaling infrastructure needs to be scaled out or all these kind of things happen. This is what day two is all about. Keeping track of and maintaining high availability, uptime and keep the cost structure in line. This is what people discover. If they don't think properly about the architecture, they have huge problems. You guys solve this problem. Could you explain why this is important? Sure thing, John. So cloud operations, as you described, is a continuous operations and continuous improvement in cloud environments. What uh, efficient cloud operations does for customers is it accelerates innovation, reduces the risk, and more importantly, over the period of time that they are using their applications in cloud, which is future, uh, reduces the total cost of cloud operations. This is important because there is a huge gap in cloud skills. The surface area of cloud that customers need to manage is growing by the day. And most importantly, uh, developers are increasingly, and rightfully so, getting a seat at the table in defining and accelerating company's cloud journey, which means now they are proposing microservices based application, container based application, traditional applications are still in the mix. Now this surface area becomes a challenge for the IT operators to manage. That's why it's very important to start right. See, uh, we, we asked this question to our customers, right? Being, uh, having listened to our customers, uh, hundreds of them, one thing is clear. When we ask this question to our customers, ever wonder why and how large scale companies like AWS are able to deliver massively scalable services and operate massive data centers with fewer people because it's automation. And it's important to think about as you scale, automate away things that must be automated, eliminate undifferentiated heavy lifting and help your developers move fast. All of this is vital in the day and age we live in, John. Yeah, I want to, get, I want to double down on that because I think this idea of integrating into operations is a critical um, key point for how where success and failure kind of happen. Uh, we've seen with cloud um, certainly IT departments and enterprises going, okay, cost optimization, check. Get cloud native, get in the cloud, lift and shift. I thought it through, I put some stuff in the cloud and then they go, great, now I need resilience. I need resiliency and I want to make sure things are, are working. Okay, water flowing through the pipes, cloud's working. 
then they have they say, wow, this is good. I'm going to need to integrate in with my on-premises or edge or other things that are happening. Then they try to integrate into their core operations. McKinsey calls this um, the value um, driver three, integrating into core operations. We heard from them uh, earlier in, in the program uh, here at this event. This is key. It's not trivial to integrate cloud into your operations. And this is what day two and beyond is all about. Talk more about that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great point. And that is, that is uh, that's something that we've been working with customers to hands on, help learn and build them, build, build, build them, uh, build it for them, right? See, the acceleration of cloud adoption during the pandemic and ongoing adoption is going to shift the software security compliance and operational landscape dramatically. It's no escaping it. Cloud operations will no longer be an afterthought, right? Uh, DevOps will integrate with cloud ops. Uh, it'll provide a seamless feedback loop so that uh, bugs can be found sooner, fixed sooner, and uptime can be guaranteed. Uh, I'll give an example. One of our customers uh, is a university. Uh, during the pandemic, their core examination application went down and they couldn't fix it on time because of on-prem uh, lack of resources. For them, it's vital to have adopted cloud operations sooner but the runway they had was very little. Fortunately, we had the solution for them where within a week, they were able to take their entire on-prem application online, not just take the application, but provide an autonomous cloud operations layer to their existing IT team with our platform, upskill them. And then about 14,000 students took the exams without any disruption. Now this customer and customers such as uh, themselves have uh, come to expect that level of integrated cloud operations into their application portfolio. It's important to address that with a platform that simplifies it. Venka, real quick, define what is autonomous cloud ops platform. What does that mean? So uh, let's take an example here, right? Um, customers who are trying to move an existing workload to cloud, bring a traditional set of application. Then customers who are born in the cloud build microservices or serverless based applications. Then there is containers. Now all three represent surface areas that customers, uh, particularly the IT teams have to manage. With the growing surface area, with the adoption of infrastructure of code as code, it becomes more nuanced to think about how do we simplify? And in simplification comes automation. When a developer provisions certain resource, Previously, they used to be filing a ticket. A uh, central IT team has to respond. Developers don't want that anymore. They want to innovate faster, but at the same time, central IT team wants to have some governance in play. The best way to get out of the way of developers is automating it. And providing autonomous cloud operations means developers can deploy newer workloads faster, but with a level of guaranteed uh, you know, guardrail on security compliance and cost that sets them free. This is what we mean by autonomous cloud operations, closing the gap in skills, closing the gap in tooling, empowering your developers without thinking about the traditional model, but enabling them to do uh, things that's uh, more in a rapid pace. That's what we mean by autonomous cloud operations. You got a great market opportunity. I think this is obviously a no brainer as uh, people say in the industry, uh, cloud is scale is proven. Even post COVID, if, if people don't have a cloud growth strategy, they're pretty much going to be toast. McKinsey calls this a trillion dollar at minimum, not including potential new use cases, new pioneering applications coming. So pretty much, well, the verdict is there. This is cloud. Um, I got to ask you about Monty Cloud as you guys have a business. Give, take a quick minute to explain the business of Monty Cloud, um, some vitals or how people buy the product, the business model. Take a quick minute to explain Monty Cloud's business. Sure thing. Uh, John, see, uh, our, our entire goal is to simplify cloud operations. Because uh, what we learned is what seems to be complex about cloud adoption is that uh, everybody is expected to be an expert on everything in the new era. Uh, but most teams are not ready to run efficient cloud operations at scale as their cloud footprint is growing. This means we have to redefine certain conversations here. We talk directly to infrastructure architects cloud architects, uh, application owners. And in general, we talk to people who are leading the IT digital transformation for their companies. What we are enabling our customers is 
they must demand that the traditional operation model must change to enable newer application patterns. For this, we are expecting customers want, uh, would want to standardize things, right? IT leaders are beginning to say, all right, I got to standardize my provisioning, standardize my operations, reduce the heavy lifting that comes with infrastructure as code and enable the business team and the application team to work closely together. The best way to do that is to go solve this problem with automation. So our platform is able to go help such customers, particularly leaders who demand digital transformation with clear KPIs. Our platform can help them ask the why question easily. And then our platform can also go perform the how part of automation. That's what we solve. Those are the kind of customers we really have been working with John. So if I'm a customer, how do I know when I need to call Monty Cloud? Is it because my cloud footprint is growing, which is a natural sign of growth, or is it because I have more events happening, more things to manage? Um, when do I know I have the need to call you guys? What's, what's the signal, what's the sign? So we, we call it a day one mindset and also the day two mindset. Uh, customers deciding to go to cloud on day one should think about day two because without thinking about day two, it can be become very expensive, right? When a customer is thinking about digital transformation, could be a lift and shift, or could be uh, you know, starting a new application pattern in the cloud, uh, we can certainly help starting right that day because uh, there are a couple of things they have to do, right? They have to standardize their cloud operations, which means setting up the cloud accounts, uh, you know, setting up guardrails, uh, enabling teams to go provision with self-service. You want to, uh, start the right way. So we are happy to help on the day one journey itself and we can automate day two along with it. So uh, standardizing infrastructure operations, standardizing provisioning, uh, security, visibility, compliance, cost. If any of this is an important milestone that customers have to achieve in their cloud journey, we can help. By the way, I would just point out that we were just talking on another session around lift and shift is not a no brainer either. If not thought through and remediated correctly, that could cost could go through the roof. I mean, we've seen evidence of lift and shift fails just because they didn't think it through, just to your point. I mean, that's not a no brainer. Quick, quickly explain why lift and shift is not as easy as it looks. A sure thing. See, lift and shift is great to get started. But uh, why sometimes it fails is that the connotations about wanting to keep your OPEX down while giving up CAPEX is at odds with each other, right? Uh, cloud is great for reducing your CAPEX, but ongoing operations, whether they do operations, can add a lot of burden to the operational expenses. What customers find out is after moving to the cloud, the cost overruns are happening because of uh, resources that are not provisioned correctly, uh, resources that should not be running, uh, wild, wild west kind of scenarios where everybody has access to everything and they over provision. All of this together end up impacting customers' ability to go control the OPEX. Then digital transformation projects are looked at from three different angles at least, right? Cost is definitely one, security is another, and then the ongoing operational tax with respect to monitoring, governance, remediation, all three, when it simultaneously hits our customers, they look at lift and shift at saying, hey, this was cheaper on-prem. But actually in the long run, this will be not just cheaper on the cloud. It can also be more efficient if they do it right. Uh, we can talk about some examples on how we help some customers with that, that, that helpful job. Well, I want to get into the cloud operations, the whole dashboarding, cloud operation administration. Is there anything that you could share? Because people are wanting more and more analytics um, I mean, they're buying everything in sight. I mean, cybersecurity, you name it. There's more and more dashboards. No one wants another dashboard. So this is something that you, you guys have a strong opinion on um, how to think this through, because again, at the end of the day, if you're instrumenting your network properly and your applications or intelligence, things are changing. Where's the data? Take us through your, your thinking around that. Uh, sure thing, you are spot on. Nobody wants another dashboard that is just spewing data at them. Because um, data without context is uh, irrelevant in, my, in, in our mind, right? We want to be able to provide context. We want to, able, uh, to be able to provide data within that context. 
And the a dashboard to us means a customer that's looking at it, an IT leader looking at it, should be able to ask the why question without working too hard at it, right? Uh, let's bring up our dashboard. Uh, I would love to show and tell. Although it's a dashboard, it is a tool that can enable IT leaders do things differently. Right, here it is, this is it right here. Okay, so this is the dashboard. Take me through yeah, this. What does this mean? Everybody, right? Uh, the chart in the middle, is, is the uh, most important piece there. What we uh, help our leaders, IT leaders do is, over the fullness of time of cloud adoption, we know that cloud footprint is going to grow. The gray chart in the back, uh, the stack chart represents the cloud footprint. As the cloud footprint continues to grow, we would like our leaders to demand that their security issues go down, their compliance issue go down, and their cost to become more and more optimal. When leaders demand this, they can make things happen. And our platform can help reduce all three and leaders can have this kind of dashboard to ask the why question. For example, they can compare one department with another department, ask that why question. They can compare an application that is similar in one department in another department and ask the why question. Why is it more expensive? Why is it more, uh, uh, you know, is having more compliance issues? This is the kind of why questions our dashboard helps our customers uh, you know, uh, perform and ask those questions and they don't have to lift a finger, right? This entire dashboard comes to life within a few minutes of them connecting their cloud accounts where we provide visibility into operational issues, trend lines of data on how much consum consumption happens. And over a couple of months, they can see for themselves if my overall operation cost going down is my IT infrastructure now in cloud more resilient? And does it take more people to do it? Or am I able to turn on Monte Cloud's day two bots to go start reducing that burden over a period of time? This is what we mean by putting the power of autonomous cloud ops in our hands for customers. And this is this is what you mean by the IT powerhouse um, for the cloud. Is this on Amazon? So if I want to consume the product, what do I need to do to engage with you guys, what does it mean to me? Am I buying a service? Is it native? Is there agents involved? Take me through what, what do I need to do? It's a great question. Um, we are born in the cloud startup, uh, which means we, uh, we are super thankful for amazing technologies like Amazon um, infrastructure as code and uh, the venting platform that's out there. So our platform is fully hosted, managed SaaS platform a customer does not need to do anything but log on to montecloud.com, click a bunch of buttons and connect the AWS account. They get started in under five minutes, self-service. And as they go through the platform, it's a guided experience where they can get to that dashboard I showed you in just a few clicks. They can get visibility, security posture assessment, compliance posture assessment, all in those few clicks. And when they decide to start using the platform more to automate and leverage the bots, they can always buy into additional services in the platform. So it's a it's a easy to use, get started uh, in 10 minutes, tops, if you will, that kind of platform. Okay, great stuff. I want you to take me through the intelligent application flywheel that's going on here. So I can imagine that as the flywheel of, of success happens, okay, I got some intelligent apps, I see the dashboard, I'm getting some more uh, visibility on the value creation, unlocking more value, new use cases, all the things that happen in cloud, all good. Um, and then I start growing, but I got builders trying to build more applications, more demand for more applications, more pressure on the infrastructure. The next question is how do you guys simplify the uh, cloud operation equation? Because um, I got to add more VPCs, I got to do more infrastructure. Is it more EC2? There's a, it, gets, it can get complicated. How do you guys solve that problem? Because if the cloud footprint starts to grow because of more intelligent applications, how do you guys make it easier and simpler to scale up the intelligent infrastructure? Uh, that's a great question again, John. I'm going to go into a little bit of a detailed slide, slide here, but before I do that, let's talk about two customers that we helped, right? Uh, this slide on the left, right? talks to those, both the customers. So what we have learned working with customers is they have to build cloud accounts, manage cloud regions, uh, user onboarding. Then they have to build networking infrastructure. Then they have to enable application infrastructure on top of the networking infrastructure. Application infrastructure could mean they want high performance computing workloads. 
or elastic services such, such as you know, queuing services, storage, or traditional VMs, databases. There's a lot to build in the application infrastructure with infrastructure as code. On top of that, our customers have to deal with visibility, security, compliance, cost. You know, you get it, right? The path to intelligent applications is not easy because cloud is powerful, but it's broad and the talent required is deep. We are able to say, how can we help our customers automate everything below the intelligent application layer? If we can do that, which we do, we can now propel our developers to go build intelligent applications without having the burden of also managing the underlying infrastructure. And we can help the IT operations team become cloud powerhouses because they get out of the way and enable. Uh, I'll give you two examples here, right? One of our customers is a Fortune 200 large ISV. They have about 10,000 servers uh, in a particular department. And previously when the servers were on premises, they had about a four member team managing compliance for it. When they lifted and shifted these servers into the cloud, the same model they wanted to, the, the, the leaders that asked, why should we continue the same model, right? They worked with Monte Cloud. Now there is a day two compliance bot that's running, managing the 10,000 servers, automatically watching out for compliance drifts, notifying them in a Slack channel, gets approval, remediates and fixes it. They were able to take those four folks and put them on the intelligent application side as opposed to continuous infrastructure management side. Another example, uh, a Fortune 200 global uh, networking company. Uh, they were, um, it's an interesting situation, John. So on Cyber Monday, uh, they wanted to go big. Uh, obviously, the Cyber Monday was very important for them. The Thursday before Cyber Monday, their on-premises data center and application went down. And their teams wanted to uh, move the application to cloud. And a partner that we work with uh, brought this challenge to us, saying, hey, this uh, Fortune customer wants to go to cloud and we have this weekend. Well, we were able to go uh, uh, guide the partner and with our platform, they were able to not only take that application from on-prem to cloud, they set up the cloud infrastructure, the networking, the application layer, the monitoring layer, the operations layer, all of that within a day. And on Monday, that application delivered 3X sales for this customer without that partner or the customer being a cloud expert. That's what we mean by putting that kind of power in the hands of customers. Yeah, and I want to go back to that slide because I think there's a second section I want to look at because what you just referred to is the, um, I think this builds into the next come on the right hand side, um, this day two kind of console vision here. The idea of getting in the weeds and getting into the troubleshooting of say that Cyber Monday example is exactly the non-agility scenario, right? Because we all, <laughs> if anyone's been worked in tech knows, when you have to get to root cause on something, it can take a while. Right, so you need to have the system architecture built out. So here, classic cloud architecture on the left moves to a simple kind of console model. That's kind of what you guys are offering. Is that fine? Am I getting that right, Venkat? Is that, is that, is that kind that's, of how this works? Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, yeah that's, that's kind of how it works. But the path to that, uh, maybe you know, a quick explanation there. You look at what's on the right is. Okay, let's put that slide back up. Let's get that slide back. Okay, there it is. So uh, what's on the right side here is every layer on the left requires specialized talent and specialized tooling. That's how customers are currently experiencing the cloud. They either have to buy into an expensive uh, you know, monitoring tool or buy into an expensive security posture management tool. They have to hire, uh, you know, uh, it's hard to find cloud talent, right? And then they have to use infrastructure as code solutions sometimes that is that can get more complex to maintain. What we have in Monte Cloud is that Every layer there, they can provision by clicking away. For example, when they provision their cloud accounts, setting up AWS best practices, uh, budget guardrails, security, logging, monitoring, they can click away and do it. Setting up network infrastructure, like VPCs, setting up AWS transit gateway, VPNs, there's templates, they can click and do it. Uh, the application infrastructure, which is a growing set of application infrastructure. Imagine this, John. If a developer can come in and request the IT team, they would like to set up an RDS database, right? Uh, the ID team can now, with day two, can provide the developer options of, do you want it in dev stage prod? And do you want snapshots, backup, high availability? These are all check boxes. Yeah. And the developer can pick and choose, and they can provision what they want 
without additional help from the IT team. Yeah. And the IT team does not have to automate any one of this because it's pre-automated in our platform. Yeah, this is, this is the promise of infrastructure as code. You don't got to get into the architecture and start throwing switches and you know, all kinds of weird stuff can happen. Someone doesn't turn on, they don't enable auto skill and they test it for this, they forgot to revert back. I mean, there's a zillion things that could go, go wrong. Human error as well as, as automation. So once you set it up, then you provide a consumable developer friendly approach. That seems Absolutely. to be what, what's happening. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, well, Vinka, this is fantastic. Final, final minutes we have left. I want to get your thoughts on the momentum and the vision. Talk about the momentum that you guys have now in the marketplace and, and what's the vision for the next five years? Great, uh, it's a great question. From a momentum perspective, John, we, we take an approach of let's work with customers and understand where we can solve some problems for them, right? We've been working backwards with customers, right? We have customers that are uh, startups that are born in the cloud. We have customers that are enterprise uh, customers who are you know, uh, having a large footprint on-prem. Then we have everybody in between, like university customers who are transitioning on. So what we did is from a momentum perspective, we worried more about, do we understand the talent gap and the tooling gap that exists across the board of all customers? Because every customer, once they go to cloud, they look to achieving the same level of efficiency and simplicity like modern cloud companies. A traditional company that moves to cloud wants to act and behave like a born in the cloud customer. For us, it was very important to understand a variety of customers, a variety of use cases, and then automate it away. So our momentum is that we are able to go help a customer that is a greenfield customer to go to cloud easily. And we are also able to go help brownfield customers ensure they can reduce the total cost of cloud operations on an ongoing basis. So we've been seeing customers of all sizes. We've been helping customers of all sizes move fast. And there's a bunch of case studies out there in our uh, uh, website. Uh, we are a startup, so we've been able to um, uh, help those customers and earn their trust by delivering results for them. So the momentum is that uh, we are able to go scale up now and scale up fast for our customers without us being in the way technically. Our customers can go to our platform, help themselves and accelerate the platform. That's, a, that's the momentum we have. Um, from a future perspective, yes, where, where things are headed, right? There are a couple of things. We, first, first things first, it's important to uh, not just predict the future, we got to create it, right? Uh, about two years back when we founded Monte Cloud, the question uh, my, in my team asked me, my CTO asked me is, what really matters in cloud banking, right? So we said, all right, this is uh, provisioning, automation, management. Yeah, yeah, they all matter. But what seemed to really matter is there are three things that matters, right? That's how we came to. One is events. Uh, the cloud itself is an eventing machine, right? Uh, more than ever, uh, the cloud infrastructure emits events at every turn, every resource, every activity is expressed as an event. So we made an early bet on building an event-driven platform from the ground up. We are the only platform that is event driven. Uh, every other platform we see are trying to solve cloud problems, which is awesome to have, but they take an approach of an API based model or an inference into log based model. So the future we believe belongs to eventing model because it's lightweight on the customer's infrastructure. It goes easy on the cloud providers. More importantly, it gets the customer as close as possible to when the event happens, right? That's very important to be able to be even to run. Uh, if you notice Cloud Native Foundation uh, came up and announced recently, yeah. uh, cloud events uh, is um, the right way to deal with uh, modern SaaS platforms. We've been in cloud events from the day one for us, right? So yeah. the future is to be run. And that's where the data angle right. I think connects here for this event and why you guys are a hot startup is observability, all these things. It's all about event driven infrastructure. It's all events, it's monitoring, it's management, it's data. At the end of the day, the data is the instrumentation is what it is. Developers are coding, uh, media's data, everything's data, everything has to do with data. You guys have a unique approach. Uh, Venka Krishnamachuri, thank you for coming on, appreciate it. And, and thanks for sharing your story here at the AWS Showcase, first inaugural Cube on Cloud Startups, part of the 10 hot startups categories. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for the opportunity. And uh, we hope to help a lot more customers 
uh, simplify their cloud operations and innovate with some intelligent applications that's going to change the world. Check out Venkut and his company all on Twitter, on Facebook, they're on every channel, all the channels are open. Of course, theCUBE, we're bringing you all the hot startups extracting the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.